This video is going to show you how to install and use MemoBase on your local system. If you are looking to bring long-term user memory to your Gen AI application, then MemoBase might be able to help you out. Whether you are building a virtual companion, educational tool, or personalized assistant, MemoBase empowers your AI to remember, understand, and evolve with your users. I am Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Before I show you the installation, I also want to mention that we are going to install this memo base with Olama. Olama is a tool which enables you to run large language models locally and for free in a quantized format. I already have covered Olama in heaps of videos. The installation is very fairly simple. All you need to do is to just click on this download button and for Linux just run this command. For Mac and for Windows just run this executable to get it installed. We will also be using a free Coin 2.5 model with Olama but you can use any model which supports agentic capabilities. Okay, so coming back to this memo base, let's try to understand how exactly this works. If you look at this diagram, this gives you a very simple example here. From the left, a person is telling something about himself that I am Gus, what a wonderful day. That is a memory that gets stored in some sort of a database and then some metadata is also attached to it. And then whenever user again comes back in few days or later, then that memory or that data item is retrieved and then that is how LLM gets more context around who this user is. So, in other words, all we are doing, we are attaching some additional data with the user prompt to give it to LLM so that LLM would have more context because normally what happens is that these LLMs don't come with any built-in memory. Uh, whatever they have been trained on, they have been trained on, you ask them questions, they give you response back and then they forget. Next time you come back, you have to give them the whole context again. So instead of you doing it every time, you just attach a memory with those LLMs and then L before LLMs answer your question, they check that memory out. If they find something relevant which you are asking again, instead of you know, giving you a new answer, they would give you more grounded answer on the basis of the memory they have in there. So that is how these memory software works. And as I have said, I already have done um, comparison of these memory tools in this video, which you can see on my channel. And I have uh, compared seven of the leading memory tools and there are various others which are evolving. So if you are looking to implement this in your production environment, maybe also have a look at this video to see which memory tool is best suited for your use case because these memory tools also have some variations. So now you know what memo base is and we are going to install it with Olama and how that works. Let's get it installed. I'm going to use this Ubuntu system and I have this GPU card and VDRTX A6000 with 48 GB of VRAM. I also have Olama installed, I believe, and I already have one Quen 3 model installed. I could also use it, but I'm just going to go with Quen 2.5, uh, 7 billion, just to show you how to download the models from Olama. So for that, all you need to do is to run this command. This is going to download and then run this Quen 2.5 model on your local system. And this is how easy it is. Okay, so I will just wait for this to get downloaded and then we will proceed further. And meanwhile, I also want to give you thanks to Mast Compute for sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you're looking to rent a GPU on very affordable prices, you can find the link to their website in video's description. Plus, I'm also going to give you a discount coupon code of 50% for a range of GPUs. I also want to thank our sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel it's an open source community focused on multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with application in data generation, task automation and world simulation. And you will also find the link to their website in video's description. Okay, so our model is downloaded. So from the model side, we are all good. Let's quickly create a, a virtual environment with Conda so that everything will remain separate from our local system. And then we will install this memo base. 
and for that let's first git clone this repo and i will drop the link to it in videos description from there let's install all the requirements there are not many there are i think three or four pydentic plus couple of other stuff that is already done and then we need to install the memo base uh, package itself with pip install memo base and that is also done okay now next thing which we need to do is to set up our config file and that config file actually holds uh, the way to integrate it with olama and for that first we need to go into this source directory once you are in the source directory there will be another directory which we need to go which is the server one and from there we need to copy the config file and they have provided an example config file which i have copied here let me open it in vs code to show you what it looks like so this is what the config file looks like for olama all you need to do is to specify this configuration where just set llm api key to olama and then because we will be running this memo base in a docker container so that is why we need to give this url uh, because I have my Olama running on default port of 11434 on my local system and then this is the model which we have downloaded. If you have some other model, just replace this model value with the next one. So let me save it. Another file of interest is this .env file. Normally you don't need to change anything but if you want to change the port or API endpoint you can change it here. But you can see that behind the scene it is using this Redis mem store. So for the memory storage or for the database it is using this redis in the memory so just leave it as is you don't really have to change it and you might have to just change this dot env dot example and rename it to dot env like i have done here now one of the prerequisites which you would need is docker installed i already have a recent version of docker installed if you don't know how to get it installed just search my channel i already have done a very simple to follow video on docker installation okay now within the server directory this is the command which you need to run with docker compose which is going to first build the docker images and then it is going to uh, bring them up after building with the docker compose so first time when you're going to run it it is going to build it which is going to take considerable time so let's wait and there you go everything is now up and running our api endpoint is also available now and this is a code which you can use in order to test it out with olama so they have shared this in the repo and as i said i will drop the link to it in video's description first we are importing these libraries then we are specifying our model here you can simply just set this config file which we already have done so this is uh, redundant and then you can define your open ai's client we are using olama model here because that is open ai compatible this is where our local uh, docker container is running with memo base and from there we are just uh, creating a chat template which is a very standard chat template which is retrieving the values from the chat with the model and this is where we are asking i am gus how are you what is my name so this is olama without memory because there is no memory here but because we have set it to false and stuff but this is where we are retrieving it from the memory because we already have told it above that i am gus so let me take you to my terminal and run this code and by the way you can just replace it with any other values you can embed it um, this simple code in your application and just keep storing the memories so let's run this simple code there you go so you see first time it didn't have any clue about my name so it says that i have noted that your name is gus i will keep this information in mind for future interaction and then i asked it again that i am gus and it says that i already know your name is gus from the memory is there anything all that stuff so you see the idea is very simple all we are doing we are storing the bits about a user in our uh, data store and then just recalling it as per user id if you really think about this you can build this stuff very very easily in your own either no database or any sort of uh, memory store which could be 
uh, Redis, it could be Memcache, there are a lot of other options. All you need to do is to just store it with the user ID and then whenever user logs in again, you just have to retrieve that information. It's a very, very simple database operations which you need to make. The only thing which I believe is the challenge here for from my real world experience and which I also have mentioned in this comparison video is the latency and scalability. And that is why you need to make sure that whatever backend data store you are using is performant and there are various um, settings which we can do depending upon the nature of the data you are storing and the nature of your AI application. And this is the secret sauce here. The usage, the selection and the setting and configuration of your data store for this site sort of memory would depend highly on your use case. And then this is where you can add a lot of value. So anyway, but I think a pretty good tool, not bad at all, very simple. And of course you can delete it, you can manage it and all those simple commands are in their uh, documentation in that GitHub repo, which you can check out. It's just a matter of issuing one call. But So there is not a very high fi things going on in there. And I believe behind the scene, they are simply using, as I told you that uh, Redis, so which you can either install open source or even you can get it from any hyperscaler easily. Let me know your thoughts as I uh, requested earlier, if you are using any sort of memory store, let me know which one is it or have you got your own homegrown uh, that makes very, very, very well sense in terms of cost optimization. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you for watching.